about the trial. Doesn't pay to worry. Cops are crazy. I mean, would a bloke like me put a bomb in his mate's car? Do you know the date of the trial? That's it. But we'll be notified. <laughs> You'll go into the box for me, won't you? What for? To give evidence, stupid. But I don't know anything about it. I don't believe. You'll be put in the box and you'll tell the truth. Do my best. Just tell him the truth. Tell him I was where I belong. At home in bed. With you. I got up at half past five to look after the baby. Yes, and where was your husband? He was in bed, asleep. Now, what did you do when you got up, Mrs. Nelson? I took the baby out to the kitchen. Yes, and when did you see my client again? I went into the bedroom at six o'clock. Yes, yes, go on. Bill was still there, asleep. So at 6 a.m. on the day that Walker was killed, my client was at home, in bed, asleep. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Nelson. No more questions. What woke you up at half past five, Mrs. Nelson? The baby was crying. Loudly? Yes. And where was he at the time? In his cot. Yes, but where was the cot? In our bedroom. I see. His loud cries awakened you, but your husband went on sleeping. Is that right, Mrs. Nelson? Yes. Well, now, you fully understand that you're on earth, don't you? Yes. Well, are you sure that your husband was asleep in bed at five o'clock? Yes. You're lying about the whole thing, aren't you, Mrs. Nelson? Uh, no, I'm not. Well, you know it's alleged that at precisely six o'clock on that morning... Your husband was seen tampering with Kevin Walker's car. Yes, but that can't be right. Well, I put it to you that the accused was not at home at that time. Well, what do you say, Mrs. Nelson? He was home. He was still in bed. You have been found guilty of murder. To set you then and there be hanged by the neck till you be dead. I'd like my freedom. You'd like your freedom. <laughs> so would I. It isn't a marriage, Billy. No, it isn't. Have you met someone else? Yes. Do I know him? You've seen him. Well, who is he? Dennis Grant. What, the bloke who put me in? Walker's <laughs> neighbour? Yes, Billy. Well, that's a turn-up, that is. How did you come to get friendly with him? He felt sorry for me. After the trial, he invited me to have coffee with him. He's helped me ever since. And he fell for you just like I did. We're going to be married. After you divorce me? Yes, but there won't be any trouble about that. It, it's automatic. Quite right, too. He'd want to stay married to a lifer. You living with Grant? No, but I've shifted from South Melbourne. You're still working? No. He's keeping you, eh? He's supporting the baby and me. 
I see. I don't think you do. We won't be living together until after we're married. Oh. I just wanted to be sure that you weren't making another mistake. How does he feel about the kitty? He'll adopt him, if you're willing. Suits me. I can't be a father to him now. What's your new address? It's... He said it would be nice when it was furnished, and it's furnished. What's wrong? I was just thinking, you're much younger than you were six months ago. Do you mind? No. Good. Now, what do you have to get? A pint of milk, a pound of peaches, and a dozen eggs. Right. Off you go. Mrs. Cochran, you told me that you were heavily married. Is that true? Oh, yes. We've been leading an ideal life. No bickering, not even a mild disagreement. Of course, he's only been home four times the last two years. A month altogether. Are you sure that you just don't want us to find him for you? Frankly, I just want to know whether he's alive. Mainly for Mother's sake. Now, supposing... Just supposing that he is, in fact, dead. Is there anybody in Australia who'd benefit from his death? Yes, I think so. He planned to manufacture in Australia next year. I know there have been considerable funds made available for the purpose. And how are these assets held as um, stocks, cash, bonds? Oh, I don't know whether they're negotiable, if that's what you mean. Is there any way of finding out? Yes, uh, head office. Now, what about an exact record of his itinerary? Oh, I don't think there was one, but I could inquire. Did you take any staff with him on these trips? No, we have trained men to run our agencies overseas. I have an idea when James meets up with his agents in Melbourne and Sydney, they all go in for a jolly good binge. Perhaps we should go out tonight and do the same. <coughs> I'd rather you didn't say anything about money and records just yet. Sybil? Oh, dear. I hope you haven't been waiting long. No, Mrs. Cochran, it's quite all right. I hadn't planned to go out, then suddenly I felt I had to see Mr. Harcourt. Has he been trying to communicate with your son? Yes. I suppose you think spiritualism is rather comic. Most people seem to. What sort of results have you had? I have faith. He knows all about you, Mr. Mackay, even though I haven't mentioned you. Perhaps he's been reading the newspapers. Nothing like that, Sybil. He described you in detail, even to the color of your eyes and the cut of your suit. I wonder if you could give me his address. I'd really like to meet this gentleman. Jim! Jim! Oh, Jim, it's lovely to see you. How are you? Oh, fine, thanks, Janet. Now, look, uh, give us a beer and a pimps, will you? <laughs> Is that your wife? <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Now, look, go back with her and I'll bring them over. <laughs> thanks, Janet. It's been a long, long time. Well, it's very nice of him. It'll certainly come in handy. You weren't expecting it, Janet? No, I certainly wasn't. I didn't know he had it. He must have hung on to it somehow. Is there any reason why he'd pick you out like that? Well, he certainly owed me a lot. He hasn't paid his account here for years. He didn't pay any other bills for his will. And he owed plenty. Well, we, we got on well together. Always have, even after Anne died. Especially after Anne died? Jim, we're old friends. Even if you are a detective... Were well, you having an affair with Mr Mitchell, Miss Smith? It was over years ago. It didn't last long. We tried to keep it quiet, but you know how it is. No one told us about it, Janet. Well, that's something. People you can trust, they respect your privacy. You can't play that. Can't I? Oh, I'm sorry. Why is Uncle Ralph doing this for us? Really? He cares, that's all. Oh. That'll be Mr. Fisher. Wait. Good day, Shell. Who's this, huh? My daughter. Yeah. Anyone else here? Check it out. Bert Doyle wants you. Who is he? What do they want? It's... Shut up. Let's get out of here. Logan! We're not leaving. Yeah? You killed Johnny? Okay, let's go. And don't try anything smart. Mummy? Move! Are you going to keep us long? Depends. What then? I don't know. 
But I'm glad it's you, sweetheart, not me. Liz, you ain't breathing too good. Watch them, Logan. I don't want it. Take it. If they try anything, use it. Sorry, Cheryl, I didn't want no part of this. What's going to happen to us? I don't know, love. What about Uncle Ralph? I wish I knew. Do you know what's going to happen to us? He's going to hurt us, isn't he? Look, love, don't ask me. I'm nobody around here. Will you let us go? Why not? You know how bird is, sure. Please let us go. Thought you might like to read them. The real good ones. Thanks, Freddie. I'll look at them later. Didn't give you any trouble, did he? <laughs> Come here. Don't, Liz. You're gonna stop me? I only mean... Get out. Don't want to. Do yourself a favour, Logan, and take off. Stay, Freddy. I'm not going, sure. I'll look after the girls until Bird gets here. I'm staying. I know the feeling. Feel you now. Gotta teach my Lizzie here a few tricks. <laughs> Did you kill Johnny? It was an accident. <gasps> he hit me and I stabbed him. No! <laughs> oh, leave her alone! Get a move on, Liz. Where's Freddy? God, he was giving me the creeps. The idiot, the cops are bound to pick him up. Hold it! Throw your guns out! We're walking out of here. your mother's point of view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Daughter being mixed up with a married man. She left you. Yes. Oh, she has. You've gone off with a criminal. That, that's why... What, what, all the policemen and everything. Yes, yes. It's not your fault. Until she's found, I... Really, a free man. Perhaps I haven't the right to. Don't say that. I don't. don't. You, you must. Hold me. Why don't you hold me? Yes. Yes, I. Two. This milk business. 
I've been reading the papers. Yes. That's not what I've been thinking about, though. I've uh, found out where Mary's working, in a bookshop in the city. It's taken quite a while this time. Aren't you being a little hard on the girl? Hard on her? She's running around with a communist, working for their cause. She's got to be brought to her senses. opening a tip again next month. I thought we might go. All right, then. Uh, I'll arrange for tickets. Do you want me to pick you up again tonight? If you don't mind. Of course I don't mind. You sure, Tara? Yeah. All right, then. sake. That young idiot won't take no from us. Perhaps you'll believe it coming from her. I can't force her. If you were any sort of a man, you'd... Now, where do you think you're going? You insist on talking about me in the third person, then do it when I'm not here. We're going to settle this once and for all. I love him, Dad. Maybe you can stop me seeing him, but you can't stop me loving him. You don't know what love is. You're too young. Well, I'm old enough to leave home. Sue. You're old enough when I say so. You say so? Steve was good enough for me until a few days ago, and you thought he came from a bad home. Well, what's so good about this home? That's your boyfriend. Sue, he doesn't mean all those he things. He, he doesn't want to see you hurt. Neither of us do. We only want what's best for you. Really? Or are you just worried about what people will think? Well, Detective Sergeant Hills, Detective Dawson. My daughter, Sue, and my wife. Yeah? Did I talk to your daughter alone, Mr. Gorley? Well, I don't really think... What's that... happened? I'd like to have a word with your daughter, Mrs. Gorley. Oh, oh. good night, Mrs. Fletcher. Hello. Oh, Errol. Oh, do you know Mrs. Jessup? No, we haven't met. Oh, this is Jack Fletcher's wife? You know Jack from the hotel? Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I haven't seen you in ages. No, I usually shop much closer to home, but I, I thought I should come round and make your acquaintance again, seeing you invited Jack and me to the party last weekend. Oh. oh. Obviously, you're not considered an outsider like some of us. I, I beg yours? Never mind. Good morning, Rose. Uh, morning, Ida. Oh. Oh. Oh, well, what can I get for you? I have a list. Oh, thank you. I gather the party was quite a success. Jack didn't get home till the next morning. Yes. Well, he, he was a bit under the weather when he uh, left with Mrs. Hayward. Oh. So they left together, did they? Yes. Is this a uh, sweet mixed biscuits? Uh, oh, yes. Oh, uh, like a fool, I, I seem to have left my purse uh, at home. Uh, I'll just pop over to the pub and get some from Jack. Oh, well, Harry could deliver it for you. You could pay him then. No, no, I, I won't have a few words with him anyway. If, he, if you'll just make up that list, I'll, I'll be back for it late. Oh, oh Jack! <laughs> oh. You're out. Caught in slips. Oh, oh. Maggie, I think I've given myself a hernia. <laughs> <laughs> Errol, well, what can I do for you, huh? I wanted to see you. Obviously, I've come at an inconvenient time. What? Oh, no, no, we just nearly had an accident. Maggie was up on the chair getting something and she slipped and I caught her. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting myself. Um, you two haven't met, have you? Uh, Beryl, this is Maggie Hayward. Maggie, this is my wife. How do you do? Jack's told me a lot about you. <laughs> yes, I've heard a few things about you too, Mrs. Mrs. Hayward. Mrs. Hayward? I'll see to it, Jack. What can I do if you feel that? You can start by explaining that rather sordid little scene I've just walked in on. 
I told you it was an accident. The only accident was that I was here to witness it. Oh, look, you've got it all wrong. Look, save your breath, Jack. I am not going to be held up to ridicule by you cavorting around with your fancy lady in public. Now, I'm telling you straight. Either you find yourself another job somewhere else, or you can get out of our house and never come back. It's up to you. Oh, Darling, I'm so sorry. You've heard? Yes, that beautiful horse. It's hard to believe he's dead. Yes, it's tough luck, all right. I'll pour you a drink. Thank you, darling. Double brandy. Straight. You still look upset? Of course I'm upset. That horse had a great future ahead of it. Mm. Some half-baked little jockey nobbles him to death, eh? No, apparently it wasn't the ball of barbiturates that Jenkinson administered. It killed it. Oh, uh, what then? It appears that someone purposely poisoned the horse. The vet's carrying out tests now to see what the poison is. You mean someone actually intended to kill Norman Conquest? Not just nobble him? There's no doubt about it. But why? God knows. I certainly don't. Oh, well, at least you've got the insurance money to console you, eh? <laughs> I, I just can't believe that of Mark. He was the only one who stood to gain from the horse's death. But you paid his debts and insisted that Mark gave you his share in Norman Conquest. That was never legally transacted. Now he's claiming one third of the insurance money. I'll talk to him and, and make him see how unfair he's being to you. I don't think he'll change his mind. He needs the money too badly. But for what? Well, I've been making some inquiries. Uh, apparently the debts I paid were only the tip of the iceberg. Mark owes thousands more and his creditors are getting impatient. Then let him have a third of the insurance money. No, Sarah. This can't go on. I've paid his way out of too many scrapes in the past. But he's my brother, Gordon. Darling, your brother murdered a magnificent horse. Well, you, you can't turn him over to the police. I must. At the moment, the police suspect Dawson, and I can't let an innocent man take the blame for what Tyrrell's done. Well, surely the police will prove that Dawson didn't do it. Please, darling, just let Mark get out of the state before the police get on to him. Please, Gordon. I'm begging you. This morning's harbour collision. Are you there, Dennis? Thank you, Gordon. Well down here at Farm Cove. It's an unbelievable scene. There are hundreds of police, rescue workers, ambulances and boats. Casualty figures are not yet available, but it's believed there are many people either missing or trapped in the wreck stern section of the ferry, which is now literally crawling with medical and rescue teams. The ferry, the Camaruka, had left Cremorne Wharf at 8.45 this morning. <coughs> George Deacon. What is it, darling? Julia's ferry. Oh, George, what are we going to do? Please, Iris, try not to upset yourself too much. Julia could be all right. Why don't you ring the conservatorium and see if by any chance she's arrived there? I'll ring the police and try and find out something. All right? All right, darling. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll call you back in a few minutes. And so far, 12 passengers are known to have been killed by the collision. Many more are still trapped in the wrecked stern section of the ferry. Ambulances and helicopters have taken at least 30 seriously injured people to hospital, while many more casualties Hello? are being treated by emergency teams oh, on George. the spot. Police have appeared it was to so terrible. From the vicinity. Yes, I know, darling. I've given the police Julia's description, but there's no way they can give us any sort of information. They've already had over 400 inquiries. Look, I'll come home and collect you. I think we'd better get down there. All right, darling. I'll, I'll wait. Grab life jackets. People were running everywhere, screaming. Then bang! The most incredible noise. Everyone was falling over, yelling. The guy next to me was thrown straight through a window. Roger, VKG. I'm sorry, sir. You two can't come through here. This area's closed. Please, our daughter was on that ferry. We've come down to see if there's any news. I beg your pardon. I didn't mean to upset you, madam. Where do we go? Well, if you walk down there past that line of ambulances, you'll come to a couple of tents. Now, beyond that, you'll see a caravan. That's the police emergency headquarters. You can inquire there. Thank you. Yes. Can I help you? 
Yes, we'd like to inquire about our daughter, Julia Deacon. She was on the ferry. I see. Did you fill in one of these forms before? Well, no, but I did ring the police and give them a description of Julia. Yes, here it is. I'm sorry, I can't help you. She's not on the list of casualties taken away so far. Of course, she could have been in one of the earlier groups that came ashore unharmed. Just weren't able to get all their names. If she'd been with them, she would have run us. Yes, I know, darling. Or she could still be on the ferry. There are still quite a few passengers to come ashore. I don't suppose there's any way we could find out. No, I'm sorry, no, it's frantic out there. In the meantime, I suggest you inquire at the morgue tent. I'm afraid that's something you might have to face up to. I'll make you a nice cup of tea. It's almost worse not knowing what could have happened to Julia. So now we just sit and wait. For what? Bad news? Vera, no doubt every girl in the place knew about this escape and went along with it. They have their ethics too. Honour among thieves and that sort of thing. You can still surprise me, Mrs. Davidson. Really? Why don't we single out the ones we've definitely got something on and make examples of them? Otherwise, this... What would you suggest? Well, I don't think I need tell you what legal, perfectly legal, disciplinary measures are at our disposal. I'd begin with a seven o'clock curfew, withdrawal of all privileges... And within two days, we'd have a situation here, Miss Bennett, that even you would not relish. You know how understaffed we are. It is only because of the tacit cooperation of the majority of prisoners that we function at all. Oh, and how do you think we get that cooperation? By patting them on the head? Certainly not by breaking heads. You had a great deal to say yesterday, and I let you say it. Only because I do not wish to humiliate an officer in front of her colleagues. But I will speak my mind now, Miss Bennett, and you will listen very carefully. I am well aware that you exceed your authority in some areas, and that your overall attitude to the women is quite at odds with the way in which I will have this prison run. You don't know these women. You can't. You come here with your university degrees over officers with years of experience in the prison service, such as yourself and others. You have a lot of fine theories. Oh, yes. These women can roam around unescorted, sit around gossiping. Look at Mason and that electrician. Everybody knows about them, copulating in corners while we all look the other way. I have that situation in hand and I'm dealing with it. What are you going to do about it? Provide them with a double bed? Don't be impertinent. Let me remind you that I am in charge here and you are not. Now return to your duties. Yes, madam. making any promises, Erica, but I don't want our relationship to be just a, a business association. I want to get to know you, to be with you, and I don't want to run or hide from something that I haven't felt in years. Neither do I. My work is my whole life. I couldn't be happy without it. <laughs> Just how are you running, Wentworth, Erica? To the best of my ability, Ted. Look, I tried to hold up the investigation on the work release scheme for as long as possible. But after what's been happening here... Well, there's the implication of you and Reynolds, Meg Jackson's association with an inmate's father, and now an officer involved with Noel. Well, you've read my reports. I'm sorry, but the department isn't happy. They're sending over an inspector, Stuart Gillespie. He'll be spending some time here, and no doubt he'll be suggesting quite a few changes. If Wentworth isn't run the way he feels it should be, I don't have to warn you of the consequences. <laughs> I think Colleen's trying to... 
to arrange it now. With all the right gates out open, it could be women still trapped in there. But the fire brigade will be here soon. I'll get them out. It could be too late. Someone has to open those gates. Erica, we can't afford to risk another life. It's my responsibility. And I wouldn't ask anyone else to risk it. Erica, come back! Where are you going, Mrs. Morris? Got the scum on the gates! You can't go in and the smoke's getting thicker. You won't last ten minutes. 